believe me when I say this to you, we're, we're all in denial that we're not receiving God's love. That is a denial we're in. We deny that it exists to deny this. But we all did this. But it wasn't really our fault. It was the parents and the environment. And for our parents, it was their parents in the environment at that time. And so on and so forth. So there's a lot that can be wrong with you without it necessarily being any of your fault. But we will have all done things in our life. In fact, most of the problems you get in your life will be your own cause, your own fault. And we're in these days, and I think the world is getting better. I think, I think we turned a corner, but it's a long journey. And if we turned that corner in late 2012, if you like, you know, maybe we're not going to be good again for another 50 years. And hopefully a big war can be avoided. But anyway, Judgment Day, March 20th, 2015, this is Judgment Day. What do I mean by that? Well, if, like I said, I want to help you feel God. And you're not going to feel God if you're continuously doing something which blocks God. So... God is loving you all the time, and you are blocking God all the time. Now, the most common thing for this, and probably for everybody nearly, is your belief system. If you have the wrong belief system, you're not going to feel God, because your belief system on God is going to affect that sort of that passage, that openness to God. And because God is so awesomely powerful, any time you get near the feeling of God and you have these errors in your belief system, it's going to cause such a strong negative emotion, mainly fear, that um, you're going to stop it straight away. So the key is to let the truth in first. Now, many different people have different feelings, so there isn't like just one answer. Well, there is, but it's not going to get through. But I'll just say it quickly, briefly. So God is this supreme being, an all-feeling soul with both male and female parts. He, she created all of our souls and the universe. The universe has its rules, and our souls have their rules too. And the rule is to choose to love in its simplistic form. You could say there's only one law, to choose to love. But there are, there are more laws, but there's you know, truth and love and you get what you give and karma and all that sort of stuff. Just like in the universe, they're unbendable. You cannot change them. They are there. And this is good because this gives us a rock, a rock on which we can base our faith on. Because yes, you still do need a pinch of faith. But once you have the truth, you only need a pinch to get there. So, without, and this, so this, so this supreme being is our parents, and we have this universe so that we can experience. The only way we've, our soul has been able to learn is through our experiences in life. And because when we were born, our parents didn't say to us, right, there is a God, there's an invisible God, you can only feel him, her. And we are just your guardians while you're here on earth, or until you've grown up into an adult. Uh, we are not the parent of your soul. That is God. Now, if parents had been drumming that into their kids as they grew up, then there wouldn't have been terrible twos. And, well, this is one day. We're going to have this. But no, parents bring up their children in a myriad of different ways, and mainly it's based on the upbringing they themselves got. I myself was a parent for several years before I heard about these truths and 
fixed my belief system in order that I could start feeling God. As I say, I mean, I, I got close before um, in my late teens, and this was kind of when I had my first judgment. It was a judgment of yourself. You, you, um, you remember all your bad bits first. Suddenly you're open to God. And that's what I was doing back then. I was opening myself to God. I was letting God see me for everything, everything that I am. And when I felt it, it was, it was powerful. It was scary. It was the point of thinking I should put myself into a mental hospital. I thought I was on the urge of that, on the brink of that. And that kind of stayed with me. And the next time I was doing it, this 19 years later, nearly, I um, I thought about that. And I thought, you know, what what is someone who's mentally ill? You know, what is it exactly? And they lock them up in those rooms and they drug them and stuff. And I started to work out that probably some of these people were getting on the verge of feeling God and got scared shitless. <laughs> and 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 society doesn't understand it, so they lock them up. Or, or they get that feeling of society that there must be something wrong with them. And then they believe wrongly that there's something wrong with them. And when it goes violent, you know, there's something else. That's people not being able to control their rage. Right, so where are we going with this? How are we going to judge the world? What classes should we put them in? I did write down a few things. So the first one that we're all guilty of. That denial that we're blocking God's love. I've come to that conclusion now that I'm doing it. So I'm not in denial on that anymore. But <clears throat> let's talk about groups. Why does somebody want to be in a group of people? Well, it must be that they feel a bit vulnerable on their own. And when they're in a group, they feel stronger. And let me just say this as well, and I want to try and write it down, because we know the answer to every possible, sincere question we may... You know the answer to anything, everything you, should, you could possibly ask. Who is my soulmate? What is God? How many Chinese people in China? That would be a difficult answer. Emotional things. Is my dad in heaven? Is he there? What spirits are around me now? What do they feel about me? What does my mum feel about me? These are questions that if we ask ourselves, we can, we can know the answer. Now, if the answer is frustrating you or not coming, it's because the answer is something you want to deny. And I was doing this the other night, and I was thinking about the spirits around me. And I was thinking about my mother's mother, and, you know, I wanted to deny that she might not like me. So I couldn't see her there not liking me, because that was the fact. I may have changed now, because we've had a chat. And when I say we've had a chat, what I do in those situations, the, the things that came into my mind. So suddenly when I allowed that possibility, I saw her straight away, sort of <laughs> angry face towards me. And then, you know, so I, and I, see the thing to do is to, when you interact with someone, is to feel what they're sending towards you and then respond with love. That is always the best thing to do. And it didn't come difficult, but I do have love for her. And she may have interpreted our interactions when I was a child differently to, to how they were meant. Because remember, as children, we were in a higher state of love. And adults don't always get it. And they often take offence to what a child does when the child was really being very good. So that's how you can deny yourself the answer because you don't want that answer you know you have to experiment with this gradually over time and slowly become more in tune right so groups I'm going to talk about groups I am an individual 
and an individual is what you should be. And if you don't feel powerful as an individual, well, there again is another error. Because your soul, which you are kind of half owner of, because you have a soul there, your soul is as powerful as the sun. And um, there's a few ways you can find out the state of your soul. And remember, the soul is you. You are the soul. The bit of you which wants to last forever and will is the soul. And that lasting forever bit is um, is kind of it's on on the same level with God's love. There is no reason God would hold back love from you at, or eternal life for your soul. See now, when I want a cigarette. I think I want a cigarette, but there's a feeling inside me which wants to smoke, or wants a cigarette. And that, in a sense, is the same want that, in fact, the original want was for God's love, because that's what we had. And when it went away, when we blocked it the first time, we didn't understand why. We hadn't been educated by our parents properly, and we didn't really have the the brain capacity, analytic skills at the time to truly know why. Or, or in fact, what the fuck was going on at all. Yes, so to want God's love, you have to want it. You have to want it for, to, to, to let it in. So it's at the door. God's eternal patience constantly ringing the doorbell. And all you have to do is open the door <laughs> and let God in. And then you have to receive it. You have to know how to feel it. So we've got three boundaries for you lot to open up. And the first one, which some of you may have opened up, is the gates. That's your belief system. Get the truth. If you don't know where to get it yet, it's divinetruth.com. AJ Miller. He's the one dishing out the truth. Next bit, we open the door. That is, in a sense, kind of your humility. Once you've got your fully understanding of God, you realise what errors you've been making all your life in closing that door so you're going to feel an idiot that the best thing has been on offer all the time and then you've got to receive it with love and know what love feels like and when it comes from God is you know you can have it just as much as you could ever wish for I mean now I know the truth and when I finished this cannabis you see, the cannabis makes it stronger. It make it opens up that hole. So all the time there's the hole there. But because of my state of soul, I've degraded as I've got older. And I, let's say I'm in sphere two or something. And I can open it that much. Cannabis is a completely non-toxic drug. There's no toxins in there. The Labour government, when they were in power, got someone to do tests on it. Professor Nutt. Shame, poor name. But he, he was the one who came out and said, you know, there's no reason to make this illegal. It's much better for you than alcohol. There's no toxins in it whatsoever. So when this this raises your levels of love, now if you've still got incorrect beliefs, you're going to hit a ceiling, and that would be fear. That, that You're going to hit some fear of the wrong beliefs. And that's what I've been doing for quite a long time. Also, the gaps are important, because the gaps get you back down to your real level. And then when you have a smoke, you can get high enough. And once you get high, if it's only... You st I mean, I stay with God until I close the door again. And over the last six months, you know, I've been doing that. And I've only just realised. So this time... It's like I've been staying high. So you ask me why I smoke another one. I want to get a little bit higher. But it won't get me that 
Well, you'll see. I'm only condoning cannabis use. I believe it's here as a tool to get to God because, as a result of all our previous generations, we've had to go through a childhood and a growing up which has taken us away from God. So it's here to, to enable us to see the truth again. Feel, feel it, to feel it. They always say about feelings. I meant to say, yeah, I was talking about the first I sort of judged myself when I was about 19. And then um, I went through a year of like just thinking, you know, I was probably mad and I had to get away from that. It shocked me so much, and um, I went to Norway and I went in the army. And, and it was before I went in the army that I had three hours to wait for a train. And I'd done long waiting before in Africa, five six hours wait, you know, for things. So I lay on the bench and I just relaxed, and suddenly I felt like this hand on my head, and it was nice, really nice. Just a sort of really nice sort of, and it's amazing, and I really enjoyed it. And I think it started to go deeper, and I sort of, oh, but what was that? That was cool. And then that night again, I had it, and I was sort of starting to let it. And then when I thought it was going to go into the centre of my brain, I just sort of shook it off. And then I went in the army, and and I can't remember how often I got it again, but not very often. But gradually over the years. I've allowed more and more of that. And when I was listening to the Divine Truth, A.J. Miller, I, and he was talking about the soul and how the soul has got organs as well. And you've got other top, you've got the mind, which is the intellect, which is the smallest organ. Now, I think that's, in a sense, what I was feeling then was my part of my soul, that part of my soul. But it never went into my body. And... Um, and then as he was talking about the humility, and I imagine like this area here, and like the humility to, to feel God without sniggering or thinking, it, you know, or anything like that. Or thinking that you're, see, if you're too arrogant, you wouldn't get it. In the first videos I made about doing this, you can see my arrogance on my face, like a facade and... And, and once I felt that, then I got some of God's love. And um, just the other night, I had some other sort of expression. It was like a baby crying. Mm, 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 like that, and it was really strong here. And then once I've gone through and felt that, then I got some of God's love. And I was able to just feel again like being with God. And I am very sure about God. And every time I hear someone who doesn't believe in God... I am very sure that it is definitely to their detriment that they don't. And if there's one thing people should really s devote a lot of time towards, it should be thinking about God. But people have been put off. People have been put off by the church. I went into a place, I went past this place in Banbury, it's called the People's Church, and I've seen the sign a few times and thought, I'm going to go in see what they're about and I was walking in and sort of saying Jesus is the way follow the way to Jesus and I agree with what Jesus taught the gospel is Jesus's teachings and they are spot on and remember he says our father so anyway like and I get to the door and there's this thing saying food bank between 10 and 12 and I thought bet they'll think I'm here for the food bank so I ring the bell anyway eventually this woman opens her door Hello, can I help? I said, well, yeah, I was just uh, curious, really, about what this sort of church stands for. I mean, what do you believe in us? She wasn't really asking us. Like, I said, you don't believe Jesus is God, do you? And she goes, yes, that's what we believe. I was like, okay, then, thank you. So, do you know what I mean? These religions get it wrong. And that puts people off. And people then are too scared to believe anything else or to allow themselves to believe anything else because they don't want that feeling of having thought it was true and then realising through like looking into what they believe that bollocks that isn't true. 
You see, the the essence is the that that God put God there, and suddenly you have a truth. There is a God, and that's why people who make the error of worshiping a book or any deviant of that book based being based on religion and and getting wrong teaching errors preaching errors i still think they're in a they're in a better place than those who have gone completely non-belief because particularly they are the non-beliefs are those who would say my knowledge just comes from science if it's not written in some scientific journal I'm not taking it in the existence of God isn't written in a scientific journal as such so they're not taking it in they believe in the universe because they can see it they believe in all the science they can see all that they're still just waiting any you know any question left they're just waiting for the scientists to to come up with an answer and what scientists tend to do, they can tend to say they think is one thing, and they get more and more information, and then, boom, no, now we're saying it's completely the other thing. And this happens in all areas of science, at, at, at the, the brinks of science. So it's good that we are understanding more and more, otherwise we would never have come up with aerodynamics. And that is cool. Or the wheel. So that is good. But when they don't know, they should just say they don't know instead of making the strongest hypothesis out of the information they've got in a sense they're just sort of guessing and they usually well I suppose probably you get they get probably 50 50 sometimes they guess right and sometimes they guess wrong so you really shouldn't be basing your truth on what are essentially our guesses when it comes to the the unknowns and there's still as many unknowns because everything they learn just creates more questions just complicates it you know they can't find the smallest thing in the universe well, how can they I suppose the electron the proton I thought there was a string after that yeah there is isn't there? you know they can't find the end either the reason that these well, this group non-believers bothers me so much is that they, they seem closed off to feeling. Now I was, I wasn't closed off to feeling, but I was practically for a while, you know, no emotion, like Spock or something. And that may seem good, that because you don't want those torrents of awful emotional feelings, and they're mainly awful when you suppress them. And, it, and mo the thing is, most people haven't tried anything else. But when you suppress them, they don't go away. They stay there, waiting to come back. And they're not going to get weaker. They're only going to get worse, unless you start to feel. And as soon as you do feel it, especially if you believe in God, because then you have God, you know, when you're, when you're feeling these emotions, like, and you've got God, God is like, saying this this is the best thing you can be doing right now ever now's the time now is usually the time feel anything what's a feeling if i describe some of my feelings it's um, sometimes there's been a sort of a just an injection of lushness sometimes it's been like that sometimes i feel like i had my face nearly pulled off Sometimes I've felt pressure here. Their spirits. A heaviness is sometimes the power of your own soul. And it's only heavy because you're not fully in control yet. And God, a soulmate feeling like a amazing, strong connection. But I'm not fully, I haven't experienced that enough yet or it's too new I haven't had night's sleep on it too much too many enough a night's sleep on something on things is good <laughs> I, I often come up with the wrong conclusions but it's how you learn you sort of come up with a conclusion in your mind and you push it and you push it until it either goes speeding down a hill or it breaks 
and it's the speeding down the hill one. There's, you know, that's a truth locked in there. That was, that was correct. Yep. And some of them crumble when you push them, when you probe them. They're not rock solid. But they're feeling from God. God is everywhere. God can do anything. You close your eyes and you play with God. Unhindered imagination is God. Is it? When it's unhindered, who is in control? Subconscious? Well, who's that? Now, you can have spirit influences. But that's not imagination unhindered. You're going to see what you're afraid to see. Face it. Ask God why. He's got the answer for you. You'll feel it more than you'll hear it. Because God isn't going to speak to you in, in words like that. But you may imagine somebody saying something. Now that could be God doing that. It depends if your imagination is unhindered or not. Now, how do you do that? Well, you know when you're forcing it. Now, has anyone ever put anything in my imagination before? Yes, I believe they have. I believe if you get a flash of a vision, you will also get information of someone it's been directed from. Most recently I had a flash of a vision and I got the sense it was from an Indian boy. And then there was another time in Africa when there were these two people from Israel visiting the mud hut where I was staying and I got a flash of a vision and I really felt it was from the girl, the Israeli girl. So when you get something like that, and that's been rare in my life that I've got stuff like that, I think there really has to be a, a good connection for that. I'm not sure, I'd have to think about if I've had stuff like that from spirits. I don't, nothing comes to mind. So that imagination, that faint reddish, you know, and it changes and suddenly you see a face or suddenly you just see something, allow it. Be brave, be faithful. Get to know that God is a, a, just so full of love for us. We're his, her children. Every single one of us. We need to see that. We really do. And some people won't. Some people will go a hundred thousand years and they won't see it. Alright, let's look at the um, let's look at the love of earthly things. I mean this is where you've got every okay. Love of earthly things. Sex, money, drugs, food. So those things, thinking about those things will keep you away from God. Now, how many of you want to go with God when you're not going to be able to have sex, money, power, drugs and food? Because God's love is so good. These things just... All right, even the drugs. I cannot carry on smoking this for more than a few days. Because then, it doesn't do it anymore. <laughs> you get me? It doesn't get me where I want to be. I don't get what I want. <laughs> it's what we want, right? We want to get what we want. And what we want is God's love. But you're in denial of that. You deny God. So you're never going to get what you want. But you're not alone. I've been fucking stupid too. We've all been fucking stupid. You want to carry on being fucking stupid? None of these things will satisfy you ever. There is nothing like God's love. And why is this? God wants us to grow in love. It's what our souls feed on. It's how our souls grow. Grow in love. Love is the answer. And God's got most of it. And that's why we get God's love. We grow. We show in the right way. We learn. There's more to learn that way than anything else. That is infinite learning. You're going to live forever. I'm going to live forever. And <laughs> our brains get freaked out by that. But our soul gets freaked out by the alternative. I'm going to live forever. I'm going to live forever. And that's what's so awesome. Is we're babies. 
we as us on earth, we're babies. Those in the spirit world, some of them are toddlers. We're not doing spirit world. Well, they're the same. They're the same as us. So when they had all this love of earthly things, sex, money, power, dreams, food, drugs, not dreams. They didn't get dreams anymore. They don't have to sleep. So they can do it 24 hours a day. They can overcloak you when you're taking drugs or having sex or at a party or at a powerful meeting or scoffing a pizza. They love food. And so they're getting their kicks. And that's why more of this is going on. Because there's more spirits in the spirit world who want more of this. And it's keeping everyone from God. It's closing the door on God. But we've been innocent until we've known this. So once you know it, and then you do it again, it's worse for your soul. So whereas the truth is a beautiful thing, it's also the knocking on the door. <laughs> what does that mean? It's wake up time when you hear the truth. But I still think it's time to broadcast the truth to all two of the people who might listen to this but potentially more who may if they could sit through it all but I'm not the only one there's, there's lots of people guiding people towards more truth the closer and closer you get the better it is I believe I stumbled onto somebody who's had access to more than we could have ever wished for really but I believe that's been part of God's plan because he came in at spirit level 7, which is higher than anyone on earth, on earth had got at that time. I think there were some spirits who had got up before, but then Jesus went through and started opening higher and higher spheres of love. And got to a point where he and his soulmate could become one again. Um, and at that point, he could have said, you know, because really, that, at that point, things were really opening up from learning from God. Because <laughs> then you'd be in like, you know, like little baby holding daddy's hand. You'd be in the same form. You'd both be a soul with both halves as one. But God would be like massive, and you'd be like, yeah. But come on, yeah, let's learn now, right? But instead, you waited for seven other pairs of souls to to reach that level and decided to at that point reincarnate come back to earth and spread some more of this spread yeah get this truth about the spirit world and everything and all the laws of the universe secrets that in a sense have been lost back onto earth and uh, I picked them up and you know, they they picked up something I'd been doing, you know, this stuff with feeling my head and stuff at night for so many years. And all this stuff we've got, and it sort of really straightened out my... Because I'd gone to the point of thinking that all our souls together was was like God. And it was just a perpetuating thing, you know, that would been an ant, we'd been a fly, and we'd been a mouse, and, you know, we were sort of getting bigger and bigger and sort of thing, bigger in animals and that eventually we'd go to other planets and we'd be like these animals that could go to other planets. <laughs> and then more and more, you know, and fuck knows what at what point turn around and go, oh, that was fun, can we do it again? You know, to something just totally different. Wow, I'm a baby. This is like and and this is all I know. So because all this, uh, this is all I know, I don't have to freak out anymore. I think, well, I, I know I've got at least 10,000 years of learning ahead of me. And I'm sure in time, you know, I will then start to be able to ask those questions of, does God have brothers and sisters? Are there, like, billions of them as well? And then they had father and mother, soul, sort of thing. And, you know... And you sort of try and imagine it in the head. <laughs> but there, there's no need to go that far. It's arrogant. 
it's 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 like well, you want to think about that when come on the next step and and hey look look at the the horizon there you know this is exciting stuff <laughs> this is awesome stuff it's like I can really feel that you know, I've had so many different visions of what my soul could be and stuff but when I when I felt it oh it feels awesome it feels awesome there is knowledge in feeling there is understanding in feeling you can get you can get so much more information when you're feeling feeling is the key right false god and idol worship you know it is wrong because they are not higher than you if they were they would teach you not to worship them and to worship God alone because you know that is the only direction in true honest pure happiness inside that is the way don't worship any other human being you know especially if it's you know singing or kicking a football or it is an error and it's the thoughts your thoughts your thoughts are the key because they begin everything so think think dumbass should I read an email? why not? I bothered anyway <laughs> just people bitching at each other it's like a comment I started I don't know 12 months ago and I just said, we're all God's children, white, yellow, blah, 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 dot, dot, dot. And there's just been arguments, people calling each other nigger brews and talking really sort of some, of, some of the stuff I give Cracker back his book. Shall I read it? I'm a child, but you're spooked out, stupid ass, believes in silly ass, black God that you think is going back through the clouds. F-O-H, whatever that means. Stop coining and give the cracker back his book. As far as nigger brew goes, I made the term up and started calling you clown ass fag hits that. So that's <laughs> WTF you bozos will be now until I say otherwise. N-K-M-B-K. Fighting. What's that on there? Anger. This anger is is being projected out in the universe, you see, because when he gets that comment to him, he's like, it's going to make him mad, you know. He's like, pulling this anger out into the universe. And, it, you know, that is in... Ref that's why we're getting in reflection, these earth changes. And I, I think that those words suit best what's been going on now, I think. Earth changes. It just sums it up real well. It's coming from the divine truth. And uh, people who've discounted A.J. Miller so quickly, they do so at their own, at their own will. I probably not, see, that's the thing. They probably have rejected him through the will of a spirit that has power over them. And I see this now more clearly in people I know and uh, it's very interesting over the last six months I have learned so much and all of it bar guessing who my soulmate was all of it has been giving me more understanding of the universe and everything and none of it has fallen none of it has been shown to be not not real it's amazing power of the soul of course it only has power over other people and and it can only be it can be employed badly and wrongly as that's what most people are doing without realizing it getting angry at someone when you're an eternal being for delaying you a few seconds is so wrong I mean, we worry about time as well. Try and rush time. I did it earlier, and I was, I was in a queue, and I was thinking there was a nice seat outside in the sun. And I thought, oh, I don't want anyone to get that seat. And I was like, come on. And I thought, hang on a minute. 
God controls it all. If you're meant to get that seat, get that seat. If you don't, you're meant to go and sit somewhere. I got the seat, and I didn't worry anymore in the queue. And in fact, it's at that point that the queue actually started to move. It's so true. So, uh, you know, most of my judgment would have to go on to people in the West. Because my experiences of being away from Western civilization would be Africa, India. Both Africa and India obviously had areas that were... And when they were, they were very strongly into the money and the power, you know, quite clear about it, you know, that's what I want. And, you know, didn't give a shit about anyone else. But, you know, the majority of people just sort of living day to day and doing what they're told, you know, very loving people, very open, spiritual, loving, good people. And I see people here in England, and they're distracted at best. Distracted. It's coming, and I hope that um, what I said may may help you or stop making some of these errors and try for a period of not making any errors and and feel God, because He she wants to feel you. He she wants you to open the door really okay i love you i love everybody you know one of the things after i first sort of thought shit you know this is fraternity what can you know god that's a long time what the fuck am i gonna do and i thought well oh, there's like billions of brothers and sisters i could get to know and when I see one of you in the street and you don't smile at me, or, you know, I, I, I get you, I get you, I can understand you, but it's no excuse, you're going to have to change, you're going to have to choose to love. It's the mistake we kind of all made when we chose not to love. I can feel you, can you?